Hello and welcome back to AmbiV. I'm Casper and today we're going to be doing engine mounts and a resonator on the 1992 Miata. So behind me you see the 92 Miata. If you watched the most recent video on this car, you know we just put a new cat-back exhaust system on the car, even though there is no cat in the car. Now, for those of you who may not be familiar, the cat refers to the catalytic converter, which is an emissions component, which essentially reburns some of the exhaust gases coming out of the engine. It's essentially a honeycomb in a giant muffler looking body that gets superheated by the exhaust gases coming out of the engine and then causes those things to reburn to a comp to an extent that reduces the emissions of the car. Now the problem we have here is this car's catalytic converter was essentially destroyed with age. So the studs were pulling out of the body and it was quite plugged up and just broken down. Now catalytic converters do have a life. They wear out and break down and need to be replaced. Now that happens quicker the higher mileage the motor is generally by how much oil and things are coming through the exhaust and ending up in the catalytic converter. In this case, we took the catalytic converter out and put in what you would call a test pipe. It's essentially something with the same flanges as the catalytic converter, but it's just a straight through piece of pipe. Now, once we put this new exhaust on, it fixed a lot of the rattles and things that were wrong with the rusty exhaust system, but we now have a high-end rasp that's really annoying, and that's because the catalytic converter is missing. Now, in a four-cylinder engine, you naturally have a predisposition to really raspy high exhaust notes, both because of the small displacement and high RPM, but also because it's a single exhaust pipe without crossover. On a V8 application or anything else that has dual crossing exhaust like a V6, you can do an X pipe or an H pipe and have the exhaust systems interact in a way that it scavenges for you for performance, but also helps cut down that raspiness by evening the tones out. In a single straight pipe like this, the only thing that was catching that note is the catalytic converter and the muffler, and the muffler isn't designed to catch that high note. It's designed to tone down the overall range. Once the velocity of the gas is too high, it doesn't do its job well. Now, I'm not going to put a catalytic converter back in just to fix this noise, because it would be destroyed almost immediately by the high miles engine. So instead, what I'm going to do is take the test pipe that we currently have under the car, cut the center out of it, and add in a resonator. Now, a resonator is essentially a straight piece of pipe. It's got no obstructions in it for the exhaust gas, but what it allows the gas to do is expand into a slightly larger area that's typically packed with fiberglass or something similar to absorb that sound. And it brings the raspiness down on most exhausts and even kills the drone typically found in most straight pipe exhausts. Now, in this particular case, I don't know if we're going to be able to fit a big enough one in there, but we're going to try to use the cheapest resonator I've ever seen and see how it does. Let's go ahead, get the car up in the air, and see what we're working with.
As typical, we turned this into a much bigger project than it needed to be. Now, I got pulled away partway through fabricating the exhaust, but I ended up using that time to think about it and we kind of came back to the conclusion we actually wanted to make this a little more permanent than we were originally going to do. Now, the resonator I used was $6 off of Amazon. $6 for a stainless resonator. Now, I'm not sure if that's an error, but it's definitely the cheapest resonator I've ever seen. So I was assuming I was just gonna hack and slash it onto the car, try it out, see if it worked, and then chop it off and replace it with a better one. Now, after thinking about it, we decided we might as well just go ahead and weld it in and make it look nice. So we welded it in, ground it down, because obviously there were a lot of impurities in the weld and it kind of looked funky. And I had to do a ton of tacks to fix my flaying and adjustment sizes that I did on the pipes. And then painted it all with high temp paint. But I didn't really care. I was actually more thrown off by the Techno Toys tuning uh, cat delete the test pipe because it was such a thick piece of tubing that it was almost more like roll cage material. I had to really fiddle with everything to figure out how to get there and then make sure I welded it properly to really get it to adhere. But in the end, it's super strong. There's no leaks. And actually inside, there's nothing in there obstructing flow. So it should actually work really well to keep all of the like 12 hamsters that power this car happy. Now, doing the motor mounts, that was a whole different fiasco. We started that whole process assuming that some of the videos we had seen in the past and some of the things that people had told us were true and that you could easily pull the mounts out with the engine in the car. Now, if you're going to try to do that, you better have several different methods for jacking up your engine and transmission, and you better have a ton of patience because on the driver's side of this car, you could not make that happen. You could get it loose from the engine with a lot of finagling and you could get it loose from the cradle but there's a power steering line in the front and an exhaust in the back that prevent you from getting the bracket out. You would either have to take the exhaust all the way off the manifold, or you would have to disconnect and bend your power steering line out of the way. Probably the latter would break off, and probably in the prior, you would break the studs off the exhaust manifold because they never get taken off. So we elected to just dismantle it inside that small amount of space we had and pull it out piece by piece, put the new pieces in, reassemble it in that space, and then remount it. It was just as obnoxious as it sounds. The passenger side was actually pretty easy. The only surprise there was the fact that there's actually an additional bracket from the back of the starter that has an L shape to it that sandwiches your engine mount on the passenger side. It's easy enough. There's just another 12 millimeter on the starter itself. Take that out, pull that bracket off, and you're good to go. You can finagle it out of the way. Now it's a lot easier when you're doing it in a situation like this where I had a tranny jack under there so I could lift it up and push it to the side to make extra space. If you're doing this on the floor on jack stands, you'll want to set aside a, a, probably a second floor jack and maybe a bottle jack so that you can use them to move your engine transmission around while you're trying to get these in and out because there is very limited space there. If you have any questions about any of this stuff, please leave them in the comments down below. And you might want to go try to steal yourself a $6 resonator because even if you're putting it on a lawnmower, $6 is less than the shipping. If you want any other information about this, always put them in the comments. And as always, I'll see you in the next video.